Welcome to the Sharpalight Business Central training video. You can follow this session using the setup guide PDF located on the Sharpalight website. In this video, we will take you through where to access all Sharpalight resources, installing the BC connector, setting up a blank database, adding the Sharpalight extension to BC, OAuth authentication setup, setting up your environment, and configuring the sync times within Scheduler. On the Sharpalight.com website, Sharpalight publicly stores all resources for any user to access at any time. This includes the latest client versions, data models, e-learning, and all manuals and guides. Navigate to the data models page under the resource tab, and then select the Business Central folder. This folder contains all relevant files and documents for BC. Go ahead now and download the BC data model by clicking the green download button. Now open up the Sharplight application on the main menu and select Data Model Installer. This is where you install new or update pre-existing data models. Click the Add button on the interface and now locate and select the BC data model you downloaded from the website. You can now see the Business Central data model has been added with the version number and release date in the columns to the right. You can now select Finish to complete this step. Cloud solutions like Business Central pose challenges as there is no direct access to the database. The Sharpalight connector uses web service calls to create and maintain a standalone SQL Server database. Sharpalight automatically synchronizes the cloud data into the reporting database, providing near real-time access to all of your Business Central data. To maintain high performance, Sharpalight uses Delta loads to automatically update the database with new records. This avoids having to load the entire database each time a record is added to Business Central. We are now going to set up a database for Sharplight to synchronize to. This can be set up in any location you choose. In this example, we are setting up a blank database on the same machine where Sharplight is installed. However, the database can be set up to the location of choice such as the cloud, Azure, AWS, or on-premise. Sharplight is compatible with Azure SQL, SQL Express, and SQL Server 2016 and above. Next step is to connect the blank database to Sharpalight. Open the Sharpalight main menu and select Client Setup. The Client Setup window is where you manage all connections to data models and all remote Sharpalight services. Select the connection type you wish to use under Business Central. In this example, we are connecting using database authentication. Next step is to now enter the server database name and credentials in the details pane. Once complete, Click Test Connection located to the bottom left of the Client Setup window. This will notify you if successful or display an error. The next step is to add the Sharplight extension to BC. Sharplight adds web service endpoints to Business Central using an app extension. There are several different extensions for Sharplight to suit the schema differences between regions. Please ensure you download the correct extension. In this example, we are using the AU extension for Australia. The extension is located in the BC Data Models folder on sharplight.com. We are now going to install the Sharplight extension app file into BC. Click the search button located at the top right in Business Central. Search for Extension Management and select Manage followed by the Upload Extension submenu. From here, locate and select the appropriate app file for your region. As a reminder, this is downloaded from the sharplight.com Business Central Data Model folder. Once selected, ensure you accept the policies and then finalize the installation by clicking Deploy. We are now going to set up OAuth authentication in Azure Active Directory. OAuth authentication uses an app registration in Azure Active Directory to authorize access to the Business Central web service endpoints. The app registration is created in the Azure Active Directory using the Microsoft Azure portal. Please follow these steps carefully and refer back to the Business Central Setup Guide PDF for further details. Now go ahead and open up the Microsoft Azure portal in the browser and navigate to the App Registrations page via the search bar up the top. The next step is to navigate and click the New Registrations button located at the top left. You can now enter a user-facing display name. This can be changed at a later date. We are using Sharplight Business Central with no spaces. You now need to set the web redirect URI. The hosting services determine the appropriate OAuth landing page URI. For example, traditional BC customers and WISE customers will need to use different URIs. 
please ensure you use the correct link for your environment displayed on screen. The next step is to change the platform to web located on the left of screen and then input the correct URI. This step is now complete. Click register to finalize and save. After creating the registration, we need to add a client secret to the certificates and secrets page located on the left menu. To add a secret, click new client secret and then add a description called sharp light located at the top right. You can now click add located down the bottom right of the page. This will create a value, which is your client secret. From here, you will need to copy the value to your clipboard and paste in a notepad. We will be using the value when setting up your environment later in the video. Next step is to navigate to the API permissions page via the menu on the left. You will now need to click add a permission. This opens up the request API permissions pane on the right of screen. Click Dynamics 365 Business Central from the selection and then select Application Permissions. From here, enable API Read, Write, All. This enables access for Sharplight users to both read and write back to Business Central. Click Add Permissions to apply changes. The permissions are added with a status not granted. Please ensure someone with privileges uses the Grant Admin Consent option to grant access. Once granted, you can now see the status has changed to Granted for Business Central with green ticks. We now need to navigate to the Azure Active Directory application card back in Business Central. You can click the search button and type Azure Active Directory application to navigate to this page. Once open, click the new button at the top of the pane to create a new application entry. Here you will need to input your client ID. This is located back in the Azure portal on the overview page. You can click copy and then paste into the client ID back in Business Central. Under description, type Sharpalight and then change status to enable. It will then show a prompt, a username Sharpalight will be created. From here, click yes. The next step is to add D365 full access to the user groups pane, located under code. It is important you then delete the company displayed under company name. If you do not remove this, you will only have access to that one company. Once you have completed these steps, you can go ahead and click grant consent button located at the top of the pane. This will allow the client ID full access to Business Central. Once you have granted consent, this will open up a standard Microsoft login window. You will need to ensure the user logging in can accept the permissions request. If the user logging in does not have sufficient privileges, you will need an administrator in Azure AD to log in and accept the permissions. It's now time to move on to setting up your environment and connect BC to Sharplight. Please ensure you have connected the database, installed the Sharplight app extension in BC, and set up OAuth authentication in Azure Active Directory. Once all three steps are completed, you can move on to the next step. We are now going to move on to the final steps and enter all credentials to synchronize data. Go ahead and open up the Sharplight application and navigate to the Client Setup window. Select the connection type on the left of Client Setup and then click the blue Setup button located at the bottom of the Client Setup window. This is the setup screen where you input all credentials relating to your Business Central tenancy. Please note, Sharplight can synchronize multiple Business Central tenancies in the same reporting database. You will need to assign an environment code for each tenancy up to 10 characters long. These codes are used as unique schema names in the reporting database to separate each tenancy. For example, you could synchronize with an Australia, UK and American tenancy. Setting up the environment code for each tenancy to AU, UK or US is recommended. If you only have one tenancy, please set the default environment code to DBO. Let's begin and input the details under the Tenant Environments tab. We recommend you copy and paste all credentials into a notepad on the side to easily copy and paste into each cell. Start by entering the environment code. We are using DBO for this single tenancy. The next step is to enter the Tenant ID. The Tenant ID can be found on the Business Central homepage navigating to the Help icon at the top right and then clicking Help and Support. This opens up a window with the Tenant ID and Environment Type. Please copy this and enter into appropriate cells in the setup screen. The next step is to enter the base API URL and the host URL. For Business Central, use the listed links below and the other listed links for Wise BC. Please remember these URL addresses can change due to Microsoft hosting arrangements. Now type or copy and paste your client ID and secret into the next two cells. It is now very important you click Save located down the bottom of the setup screen. If you do not click save, you will have to re-enter your details from the beginning. Once setup is saved, we can now test the connection. Testing the connection will attempt a single call against the BC tenancy to ensure credentials are correct. You can now select test connection. 
the status icon will turn from default blue to green if successful. If the test fails, the status icon will turn to red and display an error log in the message cell. If the test is successful, we'll move on to the next step and build the tables. The Build Tables button creates the destination tables in the reporting database for the web service endpoints that were created with the Sharpalight extension. The Build logic creates tables within the database with a three-letter prefix, SLF, SLG, SLR, and SLS. These correspond to Fact, Global, Reference, and System tables. You can now go ahead and click Build Tables. When the build completes, it will return an activity log record in the display grid in the bottom pane. We can now move on to the next step, Get Companies. You can now select the Get Companies button. This button cycles through all enabled tenancies and generates a list of all companies available in each environment. Once again, you will see the activity log update when complete. You can now review the list of companies by selecting the Companies tab below. This pane allows you to enable or disable companies you would like to include or not when it comes time to loading the data into the reporting database. To disable, click the checkbox to the right of each company. There is also a delete button which will delete a company and all local records in the reporting database only. If you have disabled any companies or made changes, please ensure you click save once complete. The last step is to load the data. The load data button executes a full delta load of all enabled tenant environments, companies, and tables. This will now populate the reporting database. You will notice the activity log will show the current records being loaded, the duration, rows affected, and rows per second. Please remember the time needed to complete a full company load will depend on the internet speed, the number of columns, and records in each table. On average, with a standard internet connection, 1 million records will take roughly an hour. If you interrupt the sync, you will need to repeat the load data step. Once the load is complete, it will change from processing load data in grey down the bottom of the setup window to a black ticking clock. From here on, Sharplight will automatically sync and only update the new records from Business Central. You can set this as frequent as you like by the minute, hour or day. It is now time to open Scheduler and set the synchronisation times to load and delete sync your data from Business Central to the reporting database. This is easy to do and is generally only required once after setup. There are two steps to finalise the BC implementation. First step is to synchronise times for loading all data. This sets a regular timer to load all tables for all companies enabled. The second step is to set synchronised times for the delete sync. This deletes records that have been synced into the reporting database but have now been deleted in Business Central. This process will exclude ledger entry, GL, customer, vendor, bank and item tables. You can now open up Sharpalight and navigate to the scheduler application on the main menu. In the scheduler pane, you can now see the load all and delete sync schedules. To manually kick off a load or delete sync at any time, right click and select execute. This will update the reporting database manually. You can now go ahead and click edit on load all. This will open up the properties of the load all schedule. Click the triggers tab located at the top of the pane to view all set schedules. You can either create a new trigger or delete a trigger at any time. This is located at the top right of the scheduler pane. As you can see, there is already a trigger set up in the service timer pane. The current interval is set to sync every two hours. This can be changed to minutes, hours, or daily as per your requirements. Repeat the steps for the delete sync schedule. As you can see in this example, we have set the timer to run at 2 a.m. every day. Don't forget to click apply and OK to save changes. This now concludes the Sharpalight Business Central implementation. For more information, in-depth explanations and troubleshooting, please refer back to the Business Central setup guide.